I'm Eric with the OKS Hunter. We're at the Waypoint booth here at ATA uh, 2022, and I'm sitting down with Michael Waddell. Michael, I'm uh, a little starstruck, but I know you're just like <laughs> a regular old dude like all of us. Right. I'm glad to be sitting next to you. Oh, same here, uh, Eric. Not to get all weird and look deeply in your eyes. Or anything, <laughs> <laughs> but and, and as the OKS Hunter, you might not know, but I'm bound to mess something up, and we set the bar super low. So I like that. Uh, yeah, we're, it's okay if we mess some stuff up. But you are uh, you have a new show, Downton Dixie, and before you get into what that is, I tried Googling – uh, define Downton, and I yeah. don't. There's not a good definition for it. Is it like short for downtown? Can Dude, you tell this all is of this us? is th this is either gonna completely pull my man card when I tell you the reason how we come up with Downton Dixie. So, uh, my wife, I if you got a girlfriend or you got a wife, you know that you have to, you know, watch any type of romantic comedies or, or, or some like of these the, series like those, that you might might come on you know th th these things don't come on waypoint as much at this point i mean if we need to, if we need to turn into that we can but but we were big fans of downton abbey okay the, the old downton abbey and so uh my wife got me into watching it and so we got married at the Biltmore, and, and, and what turned us on to watching Downton Abbey was they had all the, the props, and I think they shot some of it, or maybe they didn't. I, you know, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But So that whole era, we, we liked it. So I caught myself just watching this Downton Abbey, and I'd be like in Alaska hunting moose or something. And I'm like, hey, you better not watch that next episode of Downton Abbey. <laughs> you know, and I have some dude over there, you know, skinning a grizzly out, a brown bear, and like, I know you ain't watching freaking Downton Abbey. So long story short, when we bought our farm, um, it was real rough, and it, it needed a bunch of upkeep, and it was a pecan orchard, and it was literally, like, terrible. Like, my wife was like, I can't believe we even think about buying this place. And I said, look, if you give me a year, I said, I have this thing. It won't be Downton Abbey. It'll be Downton Dixie. So that that's really it. That's, that's the first time I ever even has, you know, other than a couple of my buddies, how we got the name. And so we, we just started calling it our own little Downton Dixie. That's you're comfortable being, th in. Being, that, being that we're in Georgia, so, yeah. Well, someone that's on TV uh, for a long time, right, back in the, the Real Tree and then the Bone Collector yeah. and now this, like, you have to be very comfortable in your skin because when you're doing documentary type stuff, you are who you are and that's it. You, It's not like you meet an actor and actress and it's like, are they really like they are yeah. on TV? Well, no, because they're acting. I think you're not acting. You're just never. being you. It, it never. So it, it you're comfortable to be down, Dixie. That's great. I, yeah, man. I don't. I don't care. I mean, I mean, I'm sitting here with a Beastie Boys T-shirt on yeah. at the ATA show. You know, so <laughs> I, I just. I mean, I. You know, that's one thing I've always felt like was a, a blessing to be is really not worry much about not just the peer pressure what everybody else thinks just be yourself have fun cut up and and i like to you know cut up and have a good time and and be real and and i truly am a, you know a happy dude and and i like to be around good folks and cut up and and laugh and then i do get serious because there's times in life you know you're hunting you you gotta you know get serious about it and get your game face on but overall Man, I really, I really don't even think about it or care, you know, much you what people think, yep. and and I think that helped me when I, when we started doing TV, even yep. even on the hunting shows, I was a dude that didn't really care, you know, at all. Even then, I was like, I said something, if it was stupid, if it was mispronounced, I never thought about it. But I think what helped was the fact that, I think there was a lot of people that that did the same thing you know it's but i just wasn't thinking about it as much oh man you know? that's a so there's a couple places this conversation could go our platform has been called one of the more relatable brands in the hunting space so far and we're a little tiny little baby we're just starting yeah. out um but that's one thing that i think we do well is we focus on failures and what we call okayest moments like i forgot my release at the truck i dropped this thing down the tree stand and played plinkle the whole way down you know goofy things like that and those are things that, you know, unless there's a blooper reel that might come out every now and again, that's kind of the low light of the space rather than the focus. Yeah. The focus tends to be the high five and the grip and grin. And what I've noticed is, you know, uh, there's been kids that have not shot any deer. They've passed on everything because they are waiting for a 150. But it's like you need to shoot deer. You gotta, you can't go to the gym at 400 pounds and think you're gonna be 185 pounds the next day. Like you gotta get on a treadmill and sweat a little bit. You gotta get some practice in. Oh yeah. Um, so as you've kind of grown up in the space, you know, tell me, like, how has it changed and what do you like? How do things look now? Well, you know, it's, it, certain times. I, I'll be honest, I, I've been disappointed in the industry. And there's certain times, and I think now we're in a good time. I, I, I feel like a, a little bit more positive 
five only because it, it, we got all these little tentacles that go in different directions and like you know shoot deer I, I love that shirt by the way hell of a shirt I, I always said from day one I said man I raise kids and I shoot deer I've mm-hmm. always said that <laughs> And because now get me wrong, I, I still have this aspect when I go hunting. Yeah, I want a big, nice, mature animal. We all do. We all want to kill a big deer, but you just forget. And you know, I've seen a handful of sword fights around here. You know, folks flexing, and you know, I shot this and shot that, and like, man, well, you know, we all did. And you know, who had the most fun doing it? Mm-hmm. You know, and and do you get a do you sit around and? You know, smoke your big expensive cigar by yourself on a dusty trophy room, or do you have friends and relationships you built? So, my adventure when I started when I was young, I was always more interested in building relationships and and things that last past just a mounted head. Now, I do have some taxidermy, and I have some of those cool adventures, but I think it's shallow when people build their whole hunting credentials on look what I shot. But if you're on TV like you are or, or us and what Waypoint's sharing and celebrating, well, people can see that, and, and they can decide if they think you're a great hunter or you're funny or redneck or goofy or, or whatever it is. It, let that be the decision. And one thing I've always got pissed off about the industry, people will go ahead and build their character. And, and it's it, like, man, it, you ain't Jim Carrey. Sure, you know, sure. you ain't Jim Carrey. You're not freaking Denzel Washington. Who are you? And I think that that identity has been the problem with some of the success of some of the shows, even because some of them are really good hunters. And I'm thinking, man, all you got to do is be yourself. And that, but as 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 hard as I can be on some people by being that, I, I realize that that I was pretty blessed to be pretty secure with just you know, you know whether it's joking or cutting up or or, or saying I don't know or you know or you know saying yeah I had to you know, stayed home night, couldn't hunt, had to watch Bachelor with my wife, you know, <laughs> I don't know. And so I, I think a lot of that is it, it's it's a it's an insecurity and some ego in there. And I think when you strip around, strip out the ego, and I think that's why we like hunting camps is just, it's freaking just fun. Everybody's having fun, eating yeah. good food, figuring out where you're going to go, whether it's a dove hunt, whether it's a deer hunt. And, uh, and I think the more we celebrate that, and sure, in that opportunity to hunt, we're going to take some really trophy animals. And there's nothing wrong with being proud of it, nothing wrong with mounting it. But at the end of the day, you got a deer that is antlers or horns, whatever they are that you took, and, and it's dead. You know, your, your kids, your wife, your friends, the people you meet here, they live forever, and, and, and you get a chance. That's the true trophy of it, and I think sometimes the industry – got it backwards is their approach yep. and it's a lot of flexing and 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 look at me You're and right. man i done got man shit my muscles and got a little bigger and all and you know it gets and, and it's like it ain't nothing wrong with that but it's like man y'all want to go get a, a cold beverage and let's let's, <laughs> let's talk about yeah, yeah let's just go hang out well it's a spectrum everyone's at a different place in their hunting journey whether you're 35 and just starting out i talked to a vegan that became a hunter yeah like that what how did that happen you know got tired of eating lettuce yeah pretty much it's like, i mean man you know uh, yeah, I'd get hungry too. You could be on the the last hunt with your your grandpa if he's on his last leg. You could be on the first hunt with your kid. You could be on your first out of state hunt. You could be, you know, I got three kids, so like I might be able to hunt two days in a season. I'm sorry. I guess I'm gonna take that six pointer because I want some meat in my freezer. You know, uh, yeah. Things change. There's ebbs and flows. Your goals might be different than someone else's, and your reason for hunting or your circumstances are all dynamically changing and evolving, even through your own journey. Yes. So the judgment that exists. We we call. Uh, we have a, a you know a deployment that we put out called My Tag My Hunt. If I bought I that, that tag and it's my money, uh, and I'm supporting I conservation, who are you to tell me how I should use my tag? And therefore, I shouldn't tell you how to use yours either. So that, that that's ego, huge. you know, boosting your, your muscle, all that stuff, that's like, well, go do whatever you want to do. It's your take. So we're not discriminating large antlers or short antlers. But I might say there's a lot of memories in the, in the little ones, especially in shed yeah. season. They're hard to <laughs> find anyways. That's when we get, a, we get to really shine. And <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, that, that's, uh, that's unbelievable points. And I think that is a better foundation than building it on kind of look at me and how big this is i mean keep in mind you know I, i'm all, i'm far trophy hunting and, and the reason is because when i when i say i'm far trophy hunting there's nothing that i can say is necessarily bad about it when you look at you know conservation efforts and where it's gone i mean if if we're still chasing these numbers and animals are getting bigger then that means then the trophy hunter is worth something because obviously we're breaking records catching bigger fish bigger animals so mm-hmm. so it's a healthier environment out there but if you're using it to define you and you hope somebody loves you more because you killed a big deer you're going to be depressed pretty quick because guess what nobody really cares yep they uh, they don't I, 
I, I learned that a long that. time ago. It's a it's a personal goal. And if you got somebody who really loves you, that you know, family member. Uh, maybe maybe it's your wife. You know, maybe she don't like it. Hell, I don't know. But but, you, but she do, it depends on the situation. <laughs> but um, depends you know, I, I th- yeah, I, I think then your success, they're happy because you did something that you they know you wanted. It meant a lot to you. It's a goal you achieve. But it ain't gonna make your kid love you anymore. It ain't yeah. gonna make your buddy like, dude, man, I really didn't like him. But he finally got that one seventy five. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm gonna invite him to the Christmas party. I don't think that happens in life. I I think and if, if you're does, just a cool it's guy, it's terrible anyways. Like it's if that, a, yeah, that's shallow. Tip for you to be my friend, then yeah, well, yeah, and actually friends, bro. What the heck? Yeah. Now you want to be my friend? You yeah. Know, what it, the hell, man? It, exactly. And so I I think I just have always been kind of frustrated and been preaching that a, really a long time and and early on into you know in the, in the 90s when I had a chance to start working at Real Tree and God, obviously I was serious about the hunting and I was wanting to be the best hunter I could be and hone my craft. I wanted to be, man, if I went turkey hunting, I wanted to kill a turkey. I didn't want to go hunt a turkey. I wanted to get a turkey. Yep. You know, I didn't want to just go get in a deer stand. So I wasn't that guy that just sitting up there like, oh, just if I see a beautiful sunrise and a little red squirrel and kill. gray squirrel, I, you know, no, nah, I want to go get a deer. It's, it's, you know, it's cold outside. I got my heating and air put paid and got fire firewood. If I'm going to sit in there, I could, you know, I could sit in the house and enjoy that, but I want to go out here because I want to experience an opportunity to fill a tag. But at the same time, I, I learned that it, the outdoors itself, and I kind of thought even then that some of the people that were flexing the biggest and, and kind of look at me and look at what I did, or I, 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 they were trying to say, in lack of better words, I felt like, look, look at me and how badass I am. And I remember the thing that kept coming to my mind, they're missing it. Hunting don't make you badass. It's just badass you get a chance to hunt. And and I thought that was the twist. And I thought that early on it helped me realize that when I'm hanging out here and seeing everybody here at a show like this, you're excited about sitting down talking about your family, excited mm-hmm. talking about what you did yep. shoot yep. And, and ones that got away. And like you said, the okayest moments to the ones that really – the, the above average ones and so i don't know I, I for me it was all very elementary thoughts but it takes some folks a long time yeah. to get there and some never do and, and that's fine um but you know what i guess with the show that you have or you know the shows that you have how do you think uh we educate people to kind of overcome some of the stuff it sounds like like you'd mentioned it kind of starting to happen it feels positive there's a yeah. welcoming kind of culture that's kind of stemming up where uh, there's less of that kind of bashing going on i mean that's yes. really that's rooted in our mission is to really put into that so i'm asking to help educate me so we can continue to make an impact to make it okay for folks to get in wherever they are in the journey so they don't have to feel intimidated we don't need to be the neck biting the no. head off. we're on the same team and if we lose conservation efforts that privilege that we have to go hunt and anywhere could go away right so just I, I really am curious about your thoughts on it because you've been around for a lot longer i'm not calling you over anything but no well <laughs> hey i am I, I believe i can I about another go. 10 years i can be santa claus <laughs> downton downton dixie he comes uh, santa claus i can have i can have the little reindeer sleigh out there but i think the biggest thing my my gut instinct is is security and um and I think, unfortunately, sometimes the biggest weapons we give, let's say the anti-hunter or, or let's call it PETA, whoever you want to judge that really mm-hmm. don't understand or, or has no value to understand, I think the biggest weapon we give them is the male ego and insecurity. And I think that becomes easy to weaponize. And, and I can use it because, first of all, we got a lot of unbelievable, legitimate, talented uh, beautiful ladies that are in the space that love to hunt every bit as much as me and you. Mm-hmm. And, and I love that. But the reason I've always thought there's less women, well, one, you know, hunting hunting is a tough thing. I mean, I, it took me a long time to figure out because I grew up, unlike some people that might have just be now coming into hunting, I grew up where I thought it was weird if you didn't hunt. I mean, you know, I'm three yeah. years old yeah. and we're checking traps and 
you know, eating turtle soup with my papa. He made some corn whiskey, and we we was country as a chicken you coop. Sound more and I did cornbread. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know. I'd heard of a place called New York City, but I didn't know about a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you ate an. You know, we all went to this nice steakhouse. We saw you know all the team there last night, and 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 I didn't know that you ate appetizers. I mean, I remember going to a place like telling my dad like, you ain't gonna believe it. these folks eat <laughs> before they eat. Like we eat all this squid and, and hey, shrimps, that sounds good. and we eating all this Maybe food and then then they bring you a big steak you know and 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 so for me that i didn't know that so i was so ignorant to that versus where there's a lot of people out there was ignorant to what i just knew which some of it could have been some cool high level stuff that i could teach them i just assumed everybody knew what a white oak tree was and that makes good firewood and his hickory right here is good to barbecue on and the sweet gum ain't good for much at all except hanging the deer stand in and you know and hitting the little you know sweet gum balls with a bat or something and i just assumed everybody knew this or a cedar tree loblolly pine i figured everybody knew that you could do these things and that you could here's a way you could build a rabbit box and catch a rabbit and here's a way to skin a squirrel i just thought that that's what everybody knew kind of like walking and brushing your teeth mm -hmm. and so and now i know that that that's not the case and so what i so fact, I, yeah you're like the the small minority you know yeah Even and i didn't know that space, you're, you're still uh a, quite a, a bit further along than a lot of folks well and i'm learning now like you know it's you know i was talking about podcasts i, I had a, uh steve Ranella called a couple months ago and scheduled i'm going out here in a couple of weeks to do his podcast and the more i realized that when i first started watching ranella i was not that big of a fan because he didn't look like me didn't talk like me he you know he wasn't as cutting up he was more serious he's eating eyeballs out of a caribou and i'm like what's what's wrong with this fella you know <laughs> and um but now good, but now <laughs> i was like i really respect what he's what he's doing in his his lane and i think that's the welcoming part mm -hmm. to where people everybody thinks that oh man right when i walked in the space everybody just opened their arms up to me not not about hunting but the personality and you know i remember coming and you know going to a, a bass pro shops and every uh person even at a hunting show would have on a st you know a very stark shirt tucked in logos khaki pants you know like sebagos or some dock you know boat shoes or whatever yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that because you're trying to look professional and sure. you know you, facial hair was was kind of frowned upon because that's what peta put everybody as the the, 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 the old murder man. the bearded man was killing yeah. all the stuff and so i remember coming in and just you know having a t-shirt and blue jeans and i remember some of the older school guys like you you you're dressing sloppy you know you can't say kill and you you shouldn't say that and you're getting too excited when you when you take an animal and I was like, well, I'm not, but I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. This is just the joy it brings me. No yeah. different than, you know, I don't good, know. Good for you for not yeah. bending then to that. And, a lot, and, I, and honestly, it, really it was tough at the beginning because I had some of my mentors, people I respected that yeah. I stood in line. You know, they're telling me this and I'm not talking like them, acting like them. So for me, it's helped me in all of the space um, to, to not be one-sided. I do have my lane of who i am you know however somebody wants to lab mm -hmm. label me uh this new show we're doing over on waypoint the 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 downtown dixie it's more personal right it is personal it's, it's I, I feel like it's a it, it, it's it's me that you see on the hunting show but it is my family mm -hmm. it is my wife and and none of it is even remotely staged or or anything it's just you know we're just hanging out at the farm you know handling handling the business you know hunting and fishing um, raising five youngins you know and uh, we just built our dream home we got our dream farm we're, we're pecan farmers and it's just that everyday stuff but there is a lot of this country living and, and stuff i'm having a chance to to you know from what i'm learning to, about the pecan crop to to trapping and trying to be a better conservationist and making sure we got better yeah. turkey habitat yeah. and quail habitat and taking more coyotes off so so they're eating less of our deer fawns and so i'm learning all this you know how to properly burn the ecosystem is a very complex yes. thing and it's almost like economics what lever you move here will impact these levers and your uh, ability to understand that is what kind of makes that up and conservation is tricky too because you do something here and it affects something there that's correct and so to educate yourself is i think important it's something that i've been putting a lot of effort in uh, you know ourselves as we kind of enter the space more that it's yeah we're donating to conservation we should probably understand it a little bit that's um, exactly like right. And, and you have to actually practice it and actively do it. It's something you take part in. You can't just yeah. you can buy a tag and it goes towards it, but you have to actually do some physical things to be yeah. a real part of it. It seems you know? like the more success you have, the more. It's like, for me, you know, I, I wasn't born, I don't think, a 
you know, conservationist or even an environmentalist. I, I, I was born a hunter, but because of my love of that and what I saw and learned, now I become more of a conservationist. You know, it's now it's important to you. You want to keep it around. Absolutely. So you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not as a game hog as I once was. I, I want to make sure my kids and grandkids, their kids, the neighbors' kids. I want to make sure, you know, that they can say that, man, we got turkeys to hunt. You know, and man, I remember old. Oh, Waddell, man, he was doing everything he can, trying to grow native garret grasses, give them better, you know, places to, to, to nest and brood. Um, he, he did this for the deer, and he wasn't just feeding deer just to, to shoot them. He was feeding them because he was wanting to make sure they was yeah, fat going into the somebody winter. Somebody yeah. Grandpa, you know, like, right? Yeah. And, and, th and be like, oh, look how much he did for us. Look at this legacy he left behind, yeah. and, you know. Yeah, and, and see, and, and, and what's different, and I, for me, like even my papa, well, well he, he, he lived off the land, but I look back, man, he wasn't even a conservationist at all. He was old school, overall wearing, you know, chewed some tobacco, made corn liquor, and that's what he sold for his income. I um, mean, he grew up in the Depression, and we had quail baskets. They're illegal. I mean, I remember, you know, seven, eight years old, we were poachers. My, my pop, but my papa wasn't. There was no trophy minded. They, there was no hunting that. It's very man, I can't. I believe. Hope this is an air on waypoint. We would go check fish baskets, turkey, I mean, uh, turtle baskets, quail baskets, catch the whole cubby. Now, not any morsel of anything was wasted, but he was using it for substance. We don't have to do it at that level. I mean, I do eat right. a lot of deer and eat a lot of wild game. And you like appetizers. But my papa, he was like a, you know, the Booger Bottom Mountain Man. I mean, he really was. Yeah. It, but he wasn't doing it from the standpoint, I ain't nobody going to believe it. I done caught 12 quail today. He didn't give a shit. He was thinking... We gonna eat good this week. Yeah. We got quail, and guess what? We got three channel cat and a couple, you know, a mud cat in the in the fish basket, and and we caught a, a snapping turtle the next week. And so, looking back, that's what I grew up around. But now I realize it was because of people like my papa, who who probably didn't help the quail situation in Georgia at the mm -hmm. time. And God rest his soul, he wasn't doing it, so, I mean, to put it on There's social no media. Intent, he right. didn't have yeah. a phone. He didn't have a phone in his house. Right. And uh, and so, it, you know, he had a couple hogs out there, and first cold day, frosty day we'd have in Georgia, he would pop one, and we'd process it, and he'd, you know, salt cure ham, he'd sugar cure one, and, I mean, we'd make Brunswick stew. And so I'm now, I, I didn't, I just thought everybody lived that way. And now I realize how blessed I was to be now 48 to have seen and raised around all that. And I found that I thought I was stepping into an industry that everybody's raised this way. And I realized when I'm getting here meeting my heroes, I was way more country than them. I was <laughs> like, man, I, I didn't see stuff. And anyway, it's just it's crazy. But I think getting back to, to that question bluntly, I would say just be yourself. If there's a certain vibe or certain style, the way you want to dress or wear, to sh do it. The That's compass you. of your if gut, listen to it. Like yes. when you were having, having mentors that you looked up to tell you to do something different, you knew that felt like it was going against yeah. the grain of who you are. That's important. Yeah, and I didn't want somebody to, else to reshape to, me yeah. because I felt like my, my, my papa and my dad and where I come from, I felt like that shaping had been done. Now, I, I do know that I had to be refined maybe a little, um, uh, you know, but at the same time, that, that would be respectful to – to understand and respect Correct. an industry or, or culture, but in my mind, the legitimacy I was a legitimately in my heart. I knew that that I loved hunting and fishing. I knew I loved the outdoors. And this, and as a matter of fact, it was really on. I, I really realized how much I, um, I, I realized then that's like, man, I, I quickly I think, man, we're missing a lot, and I still think we are. I still th I think we're getting on a better direction. Yep. And a diversity. It's good to hear and, you say that. And even the culture now, where where we're getting more urban um, young men and women that that they're asking me like, now you're the hunting guy, are you the bone collector? I don't know, man. I, but I'm trying to learn. I just think it'd be cool to camp, and you know, I want to eat organic, and it's a different vibe. And it'd be easy to kind of like, man, what are you doing, hippie? You, you know, leave out. Right. Of, but you don't. You embrace that. And and then what you and then what I've learned in traveling. And you can hunting, go have experiences yeah. with them, and they can. I learn. You learn from and them yes. and and how they live life, mm -hmm. and it helps you understand. Like, man, they're so excited to go out and just get a deer, and and it's not even anything to do with taxidermists it's all about oh my god my friends are not going to believe that i'm going to have 60 pounds <laughs> of organic you know great <laughs> you know venison. venison yes you know and 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 i'm now i'm not afraid if COVID hits yeah. you know and and you realize that these people some of these people are bringing into 
it is a more of a hipster cool vibe you know and in the way they're bringing what they're bringing to the table is huge it's, it's big i think they're helping the old timers who who lost their way because now we're like Keep Man, this guy's ready to get a rabbit and roast it on a fire. Yeah, when he started this, this was a lot of fun. I think back yeah. to when my, my first bow hunt, uh, I was, you know, pretty young. Uh, uh, what was I? In my early 20s is when I got into that. And it was a hand-me-down bow for my dad. I was in the Nicolet National Forest in northern Wisconsin, colder than can be, negative 15 degrees or something like that. Well, that was, a, that was, a, different, that was a gun hunt. Sorry. But I grabbed my bow, and it was upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and then I rotate around real slow, of course, and I go to draw back. Well, I didn't have a D-loop on my bow, so my release grabbed down above the rubber stopper and zip up the line to the cam it went. I mean, it was a train wreck. And then I dropped something all the way down. It goes, these bucks were yearlings. They didn't even know I was there. Uh, believe it or not, I didn't scare them off. But by the time I could draw back, they were gone. Right. And that was it. But, well, I was like, excited. I got to see some deer, and it almost happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you know, you learn. I never grab my bow upside down again. I, I don't <laughs> I've dropped back and have come a long way. But it, it's these moments that you get back to where that was so fun and exciting that I saw, you know, two bucks come through. And they weren't big, but they were bucks. And yeah. I, I felt probably that way about how I feel about a 150, 160 now. Like, whoa. You know, I had that same level of excitement. And it's that reminder of how did you feel when you first started hunting? Do you remember how pure that was and how little it took to get you excited? It like, yeah. harken back to that. And I think that, that bridge is being gapped a little bit with that generation. I, I, I'm seeing it. I, not with everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it. Some people's sure. egos are too big to be influenced, I think. But there is a tremendous amount of people that are being influenced to where it, it is bringing them back down um, to reality and you're realizing that uh, you know arrogance ne confidence is awesome arrogance sucks and there's a huge huge difference it, there's yes. a there's a fine line yep. and one can be interpreted one way or the other but but uh when, when you're confident about what you know when you start bringing other people in and you accept and you understand and you can learn from them and you can teach them some stuff and give them the confidence mainly to be security so i i, I think the the basis of hunting has never changed it's always awesome so whether you're the trophy hunter or it's just me and you trying to come to my farm like dude let's just you know come on let's well y eric let's just kill <laughs> let's just kill three does tonight because yep. we want to make some you know sausage that exactly that's exciting mm -hmm. um so I, I think that that element is always good, but having the security to be able to know what you're getting into and to be yourself and, and to not be ashamed of making mistakes, to not being ashamed to say, man, I, I don't know. I don't know how to set up a bow and arrow. <laughs> and, and you see it all across the, the country, whether it's a bow shop. And, and I started realizing really paying attention to the psychology of some things like, for instance, I've never been snowboarding in my life, and and one reason because I know I would suck, uh, and I just know I just, I just know that's not me, and and I remember I was in you know here I am dressed about like I am, and I went into uh, Deer Park, is it Deer Park or Deer uh, what's Utah Deer uh, Park City Park City Utah Park you City yep. you know and it's a it's a really high end you know I would say I don't I've never been to Vail or but it, it's one of those places you know you walk into a snowboard shop and everybody there snowboarding and i'm like man so what's a good board and like so what are you looking for and i'm like I go down man i don't i don't know man i'd usually get in a tube you know and <laughs> go down the mountain <laughs> i don't know i ain't never snow you know and, and immediately it hit me because i remember they was looking at me like well, who is this dumb redneck here wanting to you know you'll never do it well then it hit me i was like wait a minute and as pissed off as i was ready to get them in the gorgeous george torture rack and you know teaching them like hey don't don't talk to me like i'm an idiot which in reality i was when it comes to snowboard oh my god there's a pro shop somewhere this same snowboarder is walking in like i think i want to try bow hunting like what you want you know You're <laughs> like, right yeah i want to look at a bow like what kind Empathy, I don't know. Uh, what, is there different kinds? Empathy and, kicks and, in. And, when and, you and, and I realize, like, yeah. man, I c it, so those moments, I would say, in the maturity where I'm at now, I feel it and see it. And and I think the more we embrace it, the more program we get that shows diversity. And, and it, it's welcoming to everybody. You know, yeah. hunting, hunting don't care if you're Democrat, if you're Republican, if you're Trump or Biden, if you're if you, uh, – hippie or you can whatever it is they don't care if you're black and white they don't care don't care about religion it's a campfire and the good lord got all these renewable resources out here it's a shared experience and you know what if we didn't have the benefit of going over to a nice steakhouse like some of us do tonight and having a nice cook and somebody who processed this meat for us and did all these things we would be right now saying hey 
Now, y'all might not want to kill, but if y'all hungry, we better figure out how to yep. find a little snowshoe hare somewhere <laughs> or a gray squirrel. We have completely forgotten that. That is, yep. th is th that's gone the way of the dodo bird of understanding. But I think now with COVID, all the stuff, I think it's now that there's different cultures coming in. It's like, oh, wait a minute, I get it. I never got that white old guy before. Now I get it, and I'm all I'm over here saying, I always understood that you could come and you would enjoy this and 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 i i just think the more we can do out of that security to welcome people it's it's unarguably easy to defend i mean it's it really is i mean you you got some bad apples that can do some bad things yeah, to our wildlife resources and stuff but overall debating the fact that do i have a god-given right to hunt and fish that is like self-defense i mean you don't I mean, if I haul off and, and hit you and I'm doing harm, there's an instinct that goes over that I'm going to try to block the blow and I'm going to try to defend defend off. Same thing. If you're hungry, well, you eat. Mm -hmm. Well, do you go to McDonald's or do you go to the forest? Where do you, where do you, what grocery store do you go to? So overall, I think that that's where it's coming full circle. I guess we get uh, the yellow vests are telling us we got to pack it up. Yeah. Uh, when can people watch Downton Dixie? And by the way, pecans i think are in uh derby pie which i had my first ever derby pie the other day it was delicious but <laughs> dude yeah <laughs> so i really want to have what you have at your farm when can we uh, enjoy watching this stuff when is it well it's, it's on waypoint it's streaming it's on all the the the, the free television apps if, you know samsung vizio so if you have any kind of cable if you put a tv on and plug it in and you hook up the wi-fi and our plug in the back you know just where this hardwired you'll have access to watch waypoint and so yeah that that's where uh, this this show is airing and as well or, or be in and stream you can download the app and watch okay. it anytime so i'm super excited about it and and it's we've just been able to turn out some cool stuff that's a little bit different than your traditional tv type opportunities and we're being able to give people exactly whatever links we want and you know whether it's a or however many episodes and so we've had a fun and my wife has had fun and and it's it's give us a chance to share a little bit of our life and be transparent and uh so I, I'm super excited about it, man, and and, uh, and looking forward to, man. I, I'm looking forward. I haven't seen your shows, but I'm, I promise you, I'll, okay. I'm, I'll be I'll be on now okay. now looking. I want to check it out. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, right? Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been uh, really, honestly, great hearing your perspective on this stuff. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to 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 hopefully we can both do a whole lot more, man. Thank you. We still got a long way to go. Yeah, damn right. Thank you.